everybody let me introduce myself i am dr sumit j modi i have done dnb cardiac surgery and i am working as a senior consultant uh, cardiac surgeon at uh, un mehta institute of cardiology and research center ahmedabad today we are going to discuss about the one of the commonest uh, anomaly of the aortic wall and the aortic uh, root uh, aortic wall and uh, aortic and aneurysm uh, is uh, nowadays more common let's first begin with the anatomy of the aortic root what is aortic root the aortic root represent the outflow tract from the left ventricle and it provides a supporting structure for the leaflet of aortic wall and forms the bridge between left ventricle and ascending aorta it extends from the basal attachment of the leaflet within the left ventricle to the sinotubular junction so what consists of aortic root it consists of four structures the aortic annulus second thing is the aortic uh, cusp third thing is the aortic sinus and fourth is the sinotubular junction uh, aortic annulus has a two part one is the virtual basal ring and second thing is the anatomic uh, ventricular arterial junction uh aortic root or the sinus is they are crown shaped and it has a three projection now let's see the another aspect of the aortic root anatomy it is a cut section of the aortic wall and uh, uh, it is showing the left coronary sinus right aortic sinus and non coronary sinus uh, left coronary sinus and uh, non coronary aortic sinus is in contact with the anterior mitral leaflet while the conduction system runs below the rcc and ncc commissure and central fibrous uh, body is remain in contact with the rcc ncc commissure now let's see the morphologic uh, characteristic of the aortic root aortic annulus has a muscular attachment which is uh, around 45% of the circumference and fibrous attachment fibrous septum and anterior mitral leaflet which is around 55% of the circumference there is a fibrous attachment lie below the left and the non coronary sinus this is the longitudinal cross section of the heart and it is showing the anatomy anterior and the posterior uh, relationship of the aortic root anteriorly the right ventricle is present and posteriorly the left atrium is there and inferiorly the left ventricle and here we are seeing the aortic root from the top and it is showing the relationship of the all the four valves in the heart the aortic wall is in the center while the tricuspid wall is on the right side and the pulmonary wall on the left side and the mitral wall is posterior now let's uh, learn about the geometric relationship the aortic cusp each and every aortic cusp has a free margin as well as the base the base is attached to the aortic annulus normally the base is 1.5 times larger than the free margin now see the sinotubular junction as well as the aortic annulus so where the sinus is ends and where the ascending aorta start that is the junction is known as the sinotubular junction and sinotubular junction is the usually smaller than the aortic annulus aortic annulus is 15 to 20% uh, more than the sinotubular junction here you can see the aortic wall in a systole and the diastole the systole the wall opens up and blood flow from the aort lv to the aorta while in diastole the aortic wall close and it prevents the regurgitation of the blood from the 
aorta to the left ventricle. The leaflets are longer in the diastole. After learning the anatomy and the morphology of the aortic wall, we will now learn about the pathology and the pathological disease of the aortic wall. So most common uh, cause uh, of the aortic aneurysms are listed below. Like it's a degenerative disease, connective tissue disorder like Marfan syndrome and Ehler-Danlos syndrome, bicuspid aortic wall, uh, it is a congenital uh, uh, aortic wall uh, anomaly where the only two aortic cusps are there and uh, it is associated with the connective tissue disorder of the aortic wall. Postgenetic dilatation of the uh, aortic sinuses and uh, aortic dissection, either aortic, acute or chronic. Now let's see the indication as well as the how the aortic regurgitation happens in the each and every disease. Uh, if aortic root dilatation is secondary to ascending aortic aneurysm, in this situation there is a dilatation of sinotubular junction which leads to the distraction at the commissure of the wall leaflets uh, which lead it to the aortic regurgitation. In uh, annulo aortic ectasia and connective tissue disorder like Marfan syndrome and ehlers danlos syndrome because of the connective tissue deficiency in the aortic media, the wall of the aorta becomes thin and gradually it becomes dilated and aneurysmal, which leads to the dilatation of the sinus, dilatation of the sinotubular junction, dilatation of the annulus and all those leads to the aortic regurgitation. Now let's see the aortic dissection. What happens in aortic dissection, whether it is acute or chronic. Acute or chronic aortic dissection will lead to the dilatation of the sinotubular junction with uh, distraction of the wall leaflets and unhinging and prolapse of the leaflet secondary to sinus wall dissection. Now let's discuss the management, management of aortic aneurysm and uh, aortic regurgitations. Here we have uh, guidelines for uh, diagnosis and treatment of aortic disease. Uh, surgery is indicated in patient who have aortic root aneurysm with maximum aortic diameter more than 50 millimeter for patient with Marfan syndrome. If the patient is uh, normal and who doesn't have Marfan syndrome where maximum aortic diameter more than 55 millimeter is an indication for the intervention. In patient with a bicuspid aortic wall the cutoff is a 5 millimeter lesser than the normal patients. That means if the aortic diameter or sinus diameter is more than 50 millimeter, then it is a indication for the surgical intervention. So in a short, if we can see normal patient 55 millimeter, bicuspid aortic wall 50 millimeter and in Marfan syndrome 50 millimeter is the cutoff point for surgical intervention. Any patient uh, with uh, more than this diameter Require a surgical intervention. If the patient is a short stretcher or uh, short body size, uh, then the threshold is lower. Or patient is having a uh, rapid growth, rapid progression of the disease, aortic regurgitation, plant pregnancy. Then the indication is uh, lower. That is a class 2B indication. Now what are the treatment options? Uh, let's see the treatment option for the wall sparing root replacement. There are two procedures. The first procedure is the reimplantation of the aortic wall which is uh, pioneered by the Tyrone David. 
and the second procedure is the remodeling remodeling of the aortic wall which is uh, pioneered by the yakub the wall sparing root replacement using the reimplantation technique it provides the most stable form of uh, functional aortic annuloplasty it is pioneered by david and colleague and multiple modification of this procedure has been reported now let's see the technical aspect of uh, wall sparing root replacement let's see the operative steps of the reimplantation of aortic wall or wall sparing uh, aortic root replacement by reimplantation technique usually the cardiopulmonary bypass was uh, set up by aortic and uh, rac annulation after systemic heparinization aorta is cross clamped heart is vented through the right superior pulmonary vein transverse aortotomy was done and after uh, opening the aorta the retrograde cardioplegia is stopped and uh, uh, selective ostial cardioplegia given to the left and the right coronary artery once we achieve the diastolic arrest of the heart three commissural sutures are taken with the ethibon plagiated suture uh, anatomy of the aortic wall has to be inspected for uh, prolapse calcification perforation vegetation or any degeneration thickening etc and need to decide about the whether we can go for repair or replacement if the wall anatomy and morphology looks okay to repair we can go for the repair and the reimplantation of the aortic wall it's uh, we have to dissect the aortic root as low as possible below the aortic annulus then the sinus wall has to be excised first we have to excise from the non coronary sinus leaving behind a 5 mm cuff of aortic wall adjacent to the aortic annulus left and right coronary buttons has to be harvested and around 3 to 4 mm uh, aortic wall has to be there around the coronary buttons now the next step is the decide about the size of the graft usually we take hagar dilator and pass it through the aortic annulus and decide about the size and uh, we take 4 to 5 mm larger graft than the hagar dilator then two ethibond polyester suture has to be passed from the inside to outside uh, in the sub annular level after passing the suture we have was once again we check the competency of the aortic wall then all the three post wall post commissural post has to pass through the graft and uh, all the sutures are passed to the lower end of the prosthetic graft and graft is lowered to the aortic annulus and tied now we have to decide about the height of the aortic commissure so usually the height is measured from the uh, lowest point of the intercuspal triangle and the highest point of the commissure that is the height of the commissure need to draw a line over the uh, graft with the marker 
and the, all the three valve post are fixed with the two ethibon tricon over the graft the aortic sinus wall has to be sutured to the prosthetic graft with the foroprolin suture in a continuous fashion after suturing the aortic sinus wall to the aortic graft we check the competency of the aortic wall by injecting graft plegia we put a graft uh, plegia cannula into the graft and uh, close it with the mosquito and distend it once uh, it is there we see the distension of the lv and uh, assess the competency of the aortic wall if any prolapse is there or any tethering is there we repair the aortic wall after the implantation of the aortic wall left and right coronary buttons are sewn to the prosthetic wall into the respective sinus the distal end of the prosthetic graft has to be sutured with the proximal arch either with the foro or five prolin suture in a continuous or semi continuous fashion rewarming started dearing has to be done and uh, cross clamp is uh, removed uh, usually we come off bypass at a 35 degree centigrade temperature we assess the competency of the aortic wall through transesophageal echocardiography so here two three point has to be kept into the mind the, like if we fix the wall post too high on the graft it can lead to the overstretch of the cusp and lead to the aortic regurgitation similarly the if the wall posts are positioned too low on the graft uh, it causes the prolapse of the cusp so the measurement of the cusper height is very important in this uh, operation second most important thing is the measurement of the diameter of the aortic annulus and uh, deciding the proper prosthetic size now let's see the certain modification of the tyron david procedure david 1 that is what we have described now it's a reimplantation with the cylindrical tube graft which was uh, uh, pioneered in uh, 1988 the second procedure is the uh, tyron david 2 which is a uh, jacob remodeling here instead of uh, uh, reimplanting the aortic wall into the uh, decron graft uh, the, the one end of the decron graft is uh, cusp uh, it is cut in a shape of cusp and uh, it is sutured to the aortic uh, sinuses after excising the uh, excess uh, sinus wall and then left and right coronary buttons are uh, reimplanted in the tyron david 3 procedure it is a uh, jacob remodeling plus ncc part which is uh, where we are doing the external annuloplasty with the teflon which prevent the dilatation of the annulus uh, in a uh, tyron david 4 procedure the reimplantation is done with the 2 to 4 mm larger graft and uh, the distal end at the sinotubular junction is uh, narrowed in a david 5 reimplantation is done with the 4 to 6 mm larger graft and uh, at the level of sinotubular junction the graft is narrowed and uh, it is once again narrowed at the level of the aortic annulus while in a tyron david 5 procedure which was uh, uh, modified in 2002 which is also known as the stanford modification here the reimplantation is done with the 6 to 8 mm large graft 
sinotubular junction and the annular uh, aortic annulus is narrowed and distal graft uh, is put with the small size uh, diameter. Now let's see the benefit of uh, aortic wall. So, okay. Let's discuss the benefit of uh, wall sparing root replacement. Here we are not replacing the wall and patient is having a native wall. So we can avoid oral anticoagulation as well as the anticoagulation related uh, bleeding uh, like intracranial hemorrhage or GI bleed or bleeding from any other part of the body. And patient will uh, have an intervention free period for a long time now. What are the complications associated with the wall sparing root replacement? The most common complication is the bleeding because of the complexity of the procedure, long pump run time. It needs surgical expertise to uh, do this procedure properly so that uh, patient will have the competent wall without any other complication. Other complication is the severe LV dysfunction residual aortic regurgitation and neurological complication. If a residual uh, severe aortic regurgitation is there, need to go back on pump and need to re-repair the aortic wall or we may have to replace the aortic wall. Thank you. Thank you very much.